here's an example of finding a confidence interval for the difference between proportions. I'm just going to read through the example here. A consumer magazine plans to poll car owners to see if they are happy enough with their vehicles that they would purchase the same model again. They randomly select 450 owners of American-made cars and 450 owners of Japanese models. It was found that 76% of the owners of American cars and 78% of owners of Japanese cars would purchase another. What is the true difference between the proportion of American car owners and Japanese car owners who would purchase the same model again? And I want to use a 95% confidence level. So I highlighted a few things. Context, I'm looking at American car owners and Japanese car owners. 76% for the American, 78% of the Japanese car owners said they would purchase again. And the total sample size for both was 450. I'm going to use the panic method to go through this confidence interval. If you don't know the panic method, maybe this will help you uh, understand what it, what it stands for. P stands for parameter statement. I really just want to tell the reader what I, am going, what I am about to do. All of this work means something, and I'm going to tell them at the very beginning what all the work is, is uh, leading to. I will create a confidence interval to estimate the difference between the proportion of American car owners that would purchase another model and the proportion of Japanese car owners that would purchase another model. Now I want to point out a couple of things here. Notice that I am saying it's the difference. It does not say I will create a confidence interval to estimate the number of American car owners and the number of Japanese car owners who would purchase another model. We're looking at a difference. That tells the reader that in the end I'm looking, the numbers that I'm looking at is the difference difference between these two things. The other thing that I want to point out here is that we also have context. American car owners and Japanese car owners and we're looking at the difference and whether or not they would purchase again. Well, the next thing I need to do is go through my assumptions and conditions and that's A. The assumptions and conditions for uh, inference when we're dealing with the difference between two proportions are as follows. The first one I'm going to look at is randomization. We randomize things so that our, we randomize our samples so that our population represents, or I'm sorry, our sample represents the population. So we assume the car owners were selected at random. It doesn't tell us that they are, but we're going to assume it. Okay, the second condition for this is the 10% condition. We do not want our sample sizes to be any larger than 10% of the total population. So 450 from each group is certainly less than 10% of all American and Japanese car owners. We don't want it to be more than 10% of the population. The next one is independent groups. Now, in some of the other, some of the other uh, videos that I've made, when we're looking at a single proportion or a single mean and we look at independence, we're saying that the individuals within the sample are independent. But in this assumption or this condition, we need to uh, check to make sure that the groups are independent of each other. So we should say there is no reason to believe there is a connection between the group of American car owners and Japanese car owners. Okay, You have to compare the groups, not the individuals within each group. Okay, The groups need to be independent. And then finally, the last assumption and condition is the success failure. We want at least 10 successes and 10 failures for both groups, both the American car owners and both Japanese car owners. And when you do the math, okay, when you do uh, n times p and n times q for both the American and the Japanese car owners, you get the following results. There are 342 successes and 108, 108 failures for the American car owners and 351 successes and 99 failures for the Japanese car owners. Each each is at least 10. So my assumptions and conditions have been met. Now that my assumptions and conditions are met, I need to tell the reader how I'm going to use this. Why is it important to check these assumptions and conditions? Well, the reason it's important is so that I can do this. Because the assumptions and conditions have been met, we can use a normal model to create a two-proportion z-interval. So there's two things here on n that I want to point out. I'm telling the reader, because the assumptions and conditions have been met, 
I am going to use a normal model that tells them what type of model I'm going to use and this is pretty important you should have this as a part of your in always tell the reader what you are what model you are going to use and then the other thing that I'm telling the reader is that this is going to be a two proportion Z interval not a not a two sample mean not a one proportion Z interval but a two proportion Z interval all right now I'm going to do a little bit of math here um, to find the interval I use this formula and if you're in a stats class I'm sure that you're a little bit fam familiar with this formula if not well, there it is this is the formula to create a confidence interval for uh, the difference between two proportions now if I plug in all the numbers it ends up looking like this 0.76 I'm gonna go with American first and Japanese second. So 0.76 minus 0.78, this was given to us in the uh, original problem, plus or minus my critical value. Right here, Z is my critical value, and since this is a 95% confidence interval, my critical value is 1.96. If you're not familiar with critical values and, and you're watching this, then you need to go back and review what that means from, uh, from your teacher or from a previous example. I've got some videos videos that, that you may be able to look at, but that's our critical value. And then you plug in all of the values for p hat sub 1, p q hat sub 1, and then sample size for each. One is going to be the American cars, car owners, two is the Japanese. So this would look like this, 0.76 times 0.24 all over the sample size for the American car owners, which is 450, plus um, for the Japanese car owners, it's 0.78 times 0.22. Let me extend this. All divided by the sample size for the Japanese car owners, and that's 450. Now, I've done the math ahead of time, and the difference here is negative 0.02. And this right here, which is called the margin of error. Okay, Everything after the plus or minus is called the margin of error. Um, I did the math before, and it is the margin of error is equal to zero, or I'm sorry, 0 0.055. Uh, five. Okay. Then when I do the math and I go negative 0.02 plus this and negative 0.02 minus this, I end up getting an interval that goes from negative 0.075 to 0.035. Okay. So this is my interval right here and we're almost finished but this is the interval and now I need to draw my conclusion C stands for conclusion and here's how you write it whenever you write your conclusion you should always include three things you should include the context the confidence interval and the confidence level that should always be a part of your conclusion and here's how it should read I am 95 percent confident that the difference between the proportion of American car owners that would purchase another model of their car and Japanese car owners that would purchase another model of their car is between negative 7.5 percent and 3.5 percent there we go there's your conclusion now, there's one other interesting thing. This is kind of an extension, and I'll say this very quickly here. But when I see this interval, confidence intervals and hypothesis tests are very closely related. So when I see this interval and I notice that there is a zero in the middle of it, okay, one value is negative, one value is positive, that means that zero is within this interval. That tells me this. Since 0% is in the interval, this tells me that there is not a significant difference between the two proportions. Now again, originally we were just looking for a confidence interval, but a side note or a, a, what do you want to call it, a side effect of this confidence interval when you are comparing two proportions is the fact that if 0 is in this confidence interval, that can tell you that there is not a significant difference between 
the two proportions. So hopefully this helped, and uh, I hope you enjoy your stats class. If you like these videos, subscribe, keep watching. Uh, don't be afraid to send me any comments. I'm trying to make this as best I can and as easy as I can to help you guys learn uh, about stats. Have a good day.